uh, get up with me. Uh, get up with me. If a mob boss was ever visiting a psychiatrist, he'd be in the trunk of his car by the end of the week, along with a psychiatrist. That would never happen. My name is Michael Francis, and uh, I was a former capo in the Colombo crime family, one of the five New York Mafia La Cosa Nostra families. I'm now residing in um, the Los Angeles area, and I'm here to, uh, to be a movie critic. Yo, if he, if he got kicked out that family, it's Rav's room. Y'all will see um, ex capo dead, like, Nah, bro, this nigga just aired himself out. They finna be like, oh, you in L.A.? All right. Let's search, D let's search L.A. <laughs> nah. Let's try for you, buddy. This would never happen. First of all, there's too much work involved in this, you know? You got so many guys. And, uh, usually mob hits are not done like that. I mean, they're normally done at close range, small caliber guns and shotguns being used. I never saw anything like this before. I know back in the 20s they used machine guns, Tommy guns was the, was the term back then, but to me this scene seems to be unrealistic. Mm. Oh. What if it was back then, bro? You said back then they used Tommy guns. That was a thing for back then. Like, what are you talking about? Hey. All right, I'm going I'm to I'm let him have it. I'm going to let him have it. I, I'm, not, I'm not a mob. I'm going to let him have it. There was always a guy of that size, and every crew and every family, there was always somebody that big that was around. Italians eat a lot, and some of them get real big. You know, I doubt you'd ever see this many people. The last time something like this occurred was Appalachia, back in New York, uh, when guys from all over the country came in. I think they probably modeled this scene after that. You know, ever since law enforcement uh, uh, invaded that, uh, that meeting, it never happened again. And that I know for a fact. We're both part of the same hypocrisy. But never think. He better not say nothing about Godfather. Now, Godfather was a good movie. To my family. All right. All right. Some people have to play little games. We infiltrated society um, on every level, from the guy on the street in the numbers business right up to the White House. And you would never see a politician talk to us like that because most of them. Uh, we support it, and I'm wondering if I would have been able to stay calm, um, which was the right thing to do. I know it was you, Fredo. This kiss of death, that was a Sicilian thing, I believe, and, and uh, certainly something that might have happened in Italy. This is a scene that, you know, that, that became close to me because I had a brother, I have a brother, that uh, actually turned informant and testified against my dad and, and actually tried to hurt me and went into the witness protection program. I haven't seen him in 10 years. Uh, it's very hard to bear, hard to deal with. Since I walked away from that life... Mm. Mm. He hasn't seen him in 10 years. Nigga, the fish seen him like 20 seconds ago. You know, violated my oath just by walking away. Not that I ever hurt anybody, but just by walking away. Uh, contract on my life, the whole bit. Did you ever worry about your family? And my answer is no. We didn't go after law enforcement. We didn't bother anybody's family. That was hands off. In Italy, you know, they go after your, your family, law enforcement. I mean, you know, there's no rules when it comes to stuff like that. Can you do it with your left hand? Oh, I, I never tried. So you were right. Y yeah. I can tell you this scene is not unrealistic because, you know, in a mob-run uh, casino, uh, we certainly wouldn't have tolerated uh, I didn't like that. Anybody cheating on uh. you know, it could have been this. I mean, he breaks somebody's legs, put him in a hospital. Even though this is Lefty Rosenthal, he wasn't a maid member, but he was an associate, but he dressed the part. De Niro and Gotti and, you know, even myself, we dressed up pretty good. And every weekend, I was at weddings and funerals. Half the time, I didn't know who died or who was getting married, but we had to go as a matter of respect. So we had to dress up quite a bit. I mean, I probably had 50 suits at that time. And he was rich. Like Raquel Welch is one great piece of ass. Forget about it. But then, if you disagree... Nah, bro. Like, low-key, if I ever get rich, I'm dressing up in a suit. Like, I'm walking everywhere with a suit on. Cadillac? Not even gonna lie. Forget about it. And I got to tell you this, this is probably one of the most realistic scenes in all of mob movie dumb. You know, it's funny, I'm a speaker now, and every time I say forget about it, which I say by habit, uh, people laugh. You know, this, this scene made that word famous. It applies to everything. It's just like the sit down. Anytime you had any kind of meeting, it was always at a sit down. At a sit down and discuss, you know, a life and death matter. 
We had a sit down just to have dinner. Everything was done at a sit down. You're an entry in my book. That's all. You're just the guy who owes me money. All right. How about this? <laughs> it's number one, it's the perception that this person is a serious guy that can, you know, maybe hurt you. And that intensifies that look. Because I know a lot of times, you know, people say, hey, all you got to do is look at somebody and they get nervous. Travolta, I thought, killed this role. You know, a lot of mob guys, I mean, myself being one of them, got involved in entertainment. Travolta took it to another level, wanting to be a director and uh, whatever it was. We were more or less behind the scenes, you know, financing some of these things, getting to know some of the people, some of the per Wait, the mob made movies? He talk about he he was behind the scenes, thought of that, like nigga, you were actor or a mob. Involved with what that. are you? Really, that was a that was it. <laughs> and you had Nikki Eyes. What's up, guy? Mm -hmm. And Mikey Franchese. Yeah, yeah, now I don't think he really looked like me. I'll be honest with you. I was in the theater. I had just gotten out of prison, um, and I went to see this with my wife. And after a few minutes, she looked at me and she said, you know, is this really what you guys did? Is that what your life was all about? And I said to her, honey, come on, it's a movie. They make things up, you know, don't, don't pay attention. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute, give me a second here. No sooner do I say that than... Give me a second here. Wait a minute. Michael, hold on. Prison. Um, I don't think he really looked like me. I'll be honest with you. I was in the theater. I had just gotten out of prison, um, and I went to see this with my wife. And after a few minutes, she looked at me and she said, "You know, is this really what you guys did? Is that what you're like?" Mikey Franchese. She looked at me. Yo, he in a movie. <laughs> He's in a movie. <laughs> I was confused. I was like, "What?" You know, don't don't pay attention. No sooner do I say that than they introduce my character, and she looks at me. I said, "Come on, we gotta go." And I walked out because I didn't know why they put me in. It was a different crew. It's Frankie the Wop. Freddie No Nose. People say, well, how'd you come up with those nicknames? You know, like there was a guy that uh, we called Chicken Head. And the reason we called him that because he used to uh, shoot the head off of chickens when he was practicing his marksmanship. You know, he had Benny Eggs. Well, why'd you call him Benny Eggs? Well, he liked eggs. He ate them all the time. So we weren't really original with the names. Uh, we had Fat Tony Salerno. Why'd you call him Fat Tony? Well, he was fat. What do you mean funny? Funny how? How am I funny? I'm not just... You know, they made Henry out to be a lot more uh, uh, significant in the life than he really was. So he really knows these movies because that was his homies. Drug problem, alcohol problem. For me, Joe Pesci is, is the best portrayer of any mob guy. You know, he was around street guys. He knew guys on the street, and he just had it down so perfectly. Hey, put your eyes up. You know, most of the local police, they didn't bother us. You know, it was really the FBI and, you know, investigative agencies like that, especially the feds. I doubt if anybody, even though he was protecting his son, would ever come right out front like that and, uh, and look to put people on Front Street, so to speak. Front Street, in other words, you're telling the police that, you know, one of these guys might be guilty of doing something. So you're, you're actually... You know, in mob terms, you're becoming a rat or a snitch, and, uh, you know, you pay a price for that. There's about $30. So yeah, bro, like, the cops, uh, that's crazy, bro. You may, you basically, tell, you, you basically making them commit, you know, death. But you making them do it. Where's the rest? Yeah, where's the rest? No, I've seen this man before. Well, I bought a few rounds of drinks over here while I was waiting. You know, this whole Shylocking scene. I've uh, seen him before. You know, very accurate. Who he looked like? Lone he looked like somebody. Basically lending money at your jury. Somebody I know. Everybody that was in that life was in that business that had any money. You know, he plays these roles good. I think today, you know, the way De Niro's acting, he thinks he really is a mob guy. You know, it's kind of permeated his whole being and his character. Truck. Uh, it fell off a truck. Uh, you know, a truck truck. 
A lot of things fell off a truck. I mean, that was the expression that we used, whether it be clothing, suit, you know, uh, electronics, uh, cars, whatever. You know, hijacking was a big thing back in the day, no question about it. And there were some guys that were professional hijackers. Today, it's, it's very difficult, but it was a lot easier to change the serial numbers and, uh, and make a new car out of it, and nobody could really find it, so. Mm. Let's get out of here. Come on. Now, I wish it was back then, bro. You know, I'm a little Ooh. I would have had a, um, a Corvette. How'd you get the Corvette? Nigga, I'm rich. Car out of it, the fuck? Could really find it, so. Let's get out of here. Come on. You know, I'm a little bit jaded when I, when I look at this film, only because I know that the Sheerhan story is fiction. I mean, he didn't kill Hoffa. I didn't know Jimmy Hoffa personally, but it was during my time. But I do have insight into, you know, the, what really happened there. He was a hot-headed guy, and he was a very, he was one of the most powerful guys in the country at that point. Remember this, you control the Teamsters in, in a big way, you control the country. You know, number one, you got zillions of dollars in your pension funds. You call a strike as a Teamster, you know, you got two and a half million people stopping. Nothing gets delivered, everything stops, and that's a tremendous amount of power. The Joey Gallo killing. Bro, all I know about Teamsters is Tropico because, like, it was something with the docks. Like, that's all I know about Teamsters. I don't know what the f*** you talking know, about. You know, for a fact, what happened there, like I said, that was our time. And, you know, I was, I was in the middle of that. I wasn't a shooter, don't get me wrong, but I knew it was our family. For him to be so, you know, outspoken about doing that, it was just so wrong. I mean, the scene was accurate. I mean, he did get killed in that way. He did get out into the street, and they did get him there, and his family was there. The Wait, what happened? In fact, what happened? And that's a tremendous... You got two and a half in the power. That was... Because I know, you know... But the Joey Gallo killing, that was... Because I know, you know, for a fact, what happened there. Like I said, that was our time. And, you know, I was, I was so, you know, outspoken about doing that. It was just so wrong. I mean, the scene was accurate. I mean, he did get killed in that way. He did get out into the street, and they did get him there, and his family was there, the whole thing. But Sheehan wasn't the, the shooter. You are in, effect in front of his family? That's crazy. Being appointed to that position. I mean, he, he certainly now you're going to get snitched on. Everybody looks at Capone. Damn. Like he was a 40, 50-year-old guy. He was like 29 years old. He was in his 30s when he passed away, I think. You know, Capone was bigger than life in the movies. He wasn't bigger than life with us. I mean, nobody really regarded him. You know, even my father said, you know, he was, they were, we chased him out of Brooklyn. He went to Chicago. I mean, and my father, my father's 103. So he was around all of these guys. You know, unfortunately, I get asked about all the time is about murder in that life. And, and I will tell you this. Murder was taken very seriously, okay? It can only be approved by the boss. So I've been very, very fortunate to be here where I am now and, and not dead or in prison <clears throat> like just about all of my associates. Wait, so he was this Al Capone right there. Oh, yeah, this show right here. If mob boss was ever visiting a psychiatrist, he'd be in the trunk of his car by the end of the week, along with the I mean, in the show, they was talking about that, though. There's no way in the world, if a mob boss hit anybody, that that guy would come back at him. No way, especially in front of all. If he did, you don't ever raise your hand to a made guy, no matter who you are. You raise your hand to a made guy, you're dead. And so, um, and they know that. So this, this is not a realistic scene. So David Chase gets in touch with me uh, through a friend of mine, Jack Gelardi at ICM, and he says, Look, So, so, so the Sopranos was house. fake? And we want you to be a fake. as a consultant. And I said, you know, I'm on parole and all this stuff. And things. So I turned it down. That's how smart I am, right? The Sopranos. But I, I always wondered why he contacted me. In my house back in the 60s, when it was being built, the government, the FBI, installed a bugging device. They had it in the kitchen of our house, and they picked up a lot of the conversation on a daily basis. And I am telling you that Tony Soprano's mother was so much like my mother. You know, maybe got the Freedom of Information Act, maybe did something, but he got a hold of that surveillance uh, tapes, and he patterned that woman uh, on my mother. And I said, I, I, I would, I'll tell you, I would almost stake my life on it. I've never had a chance to talk to him about it. One other thing, though. John said he went to a cookout at your house. Yeah. Don doesn't wear shorts. 
That, that's not true at all. I mean, I saw, you know, on a hot summer day in uh, Harlem, you know, guys would sit out in front of their social clubs and they'd be in shorts, even the boss. I mean, you know, that, that's, that's not true. Bro, they make it look like, like, they make it look like, it, I don't know. These movies make it look like, like, it's such a, uh, a business like they wear suits every day they wake up in a suit they sleep in a suit like it's not like that bro it's real life like be realistic I mean, you come on, on. Boat, you're in short or maybe somebody told them that that you know didn't know what they were talking about but that's not true all right 